Do you want to know how to develop authentic leadership? Stick around and I'll tell you a story of a leader who changed my life with authentic leadership, not through the typical charismatic, dynamic sort of leadership skills that we imagine, but through something that was deep and abiding that changed me. It changed how I saw things in my life because of how this person acted. I'm James Burnham. I'm a fear coach, and I use fear as a guide to work through things that block people. Leadership, authentic leadership, is often not reached by people who have fears that they are unable to break through to show up the way they need to. So here's four points in how you can show up and be the leader that you want. And then I'll tell you my story. Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? So point one, stick to your strengths. Do you know what your strengths are? Are you willing to admit them? Point two, understand your weaknesses. It's important to know that you got weak areas and you not, need to be able to own them. And be passionate about your pursuit. If you don't have passion, if you don't bring that to the table, nobody wants to follow you. Own your mistakes. Be open about your concerns. This allows people to see where they can help you. And true leaders accept help. So in my life, I was a kid that really, really struggled in my younger years in school. I, in fact, got basically tossed out of my elementary school in sixth grade and put into another school. And then halfway through my junior year, I ended up transferring from the school I was in to another school because I was struggling academically. I really, really struggled. I was in remedial English classes until grade nine. That's what we say in Canada. Ninth grade for my American friends. And I struggled. I didn't feel like I was a good student at all. In fact, my grades reflect that I wasn't. And I just didn't know what I was going to do. But I took this class. I, in fact, had two separate teachers in English in my senior year in high school. And one was a class called Reading, Writing, and Running. And we would take the week. I had English three times in a week. And one class on one week would be running. And then we'd do English on the other, and then we'd run on the third class. And then the next week, we'd switch that to English, running, English. I loved it because I didn't have to do so much English. What I found out with my teacher was that he was just this great guy that really enjoyed us. And he was open and honest and vulnerable with us. And he would do these warm-ups before. And even though he was our running coach and our English teacher, he would laugh at himself and his own inabilities to be a great teacher. He didn't act like he knew everything. And when we would do warm-ups and stretches before our run, he was so incapable of stretching. He'd make us run through all the stretches and he'd stand there like barely moving and be like, oh, that's a stretch. And we would laugh at him and he would support us in our strengths as how flexible we were. He did not feel embarrassed about the fact that he was not a flexible man, nor did he feel embarrassed that we ran way faster than him when we ran. He just ran at his pace. It was so profound for me to see somebody teaching in this way, but he was deeply passionate about what he taught us. And it inspired me to see English in another way. He was very passionate about how we wrote. And I began to find interest in writing through him. And then, he made mistakes. He would do stuff and he would admit it to us. I had never had a teacher be so open about that. He would talk about being concerned about whether we were prepared enough for, we had cross Canadian exams that we had to write. And he wanted to make sure that we were well prepared and he wasn't sure if he was teaching us the right stuff and he would ask us questions. He involved us in the curriculum. It was interesting for me to see and it changed my perspective on the whole concept of studying English, something that I had avoided till that time because this man was such a powerful leader and not in your typical way. He was very quirky, great guy. My other English teacher, and I studied English in university because of these two men. 
My other English teacher was a Lit 12 teacher, and we studied literature. It was pretty much the equivalent to a general education requirement at university, and we would go into the stuff. And I remember at one point, um, he would challenge us, and he was very insightful, and he was strong and powerful in his way of engaging our perspective on what literature was saying, and he would have us interpret these things. And at one point, we were reading Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, and there's a number of characters in the Canterbury Tales that, as you read through, Chaucer makes fun of. He likes to make fun of the religious leaders and things like that, and he uses a method of sarcasm that's pretty apparent. And then there's a knight in the tale that he talks about, and he asked us what our interpretation of, of the knight was. And my interpretation was that this knight was being mocked by Chaucer. And my, my teacher said, that's not true. Every academic scholar that has ever read Chaucer's Canterbury's Tales says that this is one character that Chaucer actually likes. And he believes the knight is strong and good. And he engaged with me in this conversation, and I completely disagreed with him. And he was passionate about the fact that he was right, but he did not discount me in my passion that I believed Chaucer was mocking the knight. He just made me think. He did not make me feel like my mistake of saying that this is how I interpret Chaucer's knight he, he didn't make me feel diminished for thinking that way. What he did was he inspired me to study it more. And I ended up getting a research grant as a student at university to dive into this and to write a paper that I was able to take to conferences and present on Chaucer's Night in the Canterbury Tales. This because a leader or a teacher who became an authentic leader for me was able to lean into their strength, know that they were not all things for everyone, and be passionate, and make mistakes safe so that I could explore and understand that disagreements, concerns, mistakes were not a problem, but an opportunity for further insight. This is an interesting thing, because both these men, if you had met on the street, you would not say are natural leaders, but they had profound impacts on my life because of the way they moved. You don't need to be what we picture as that charismatic, amazing person. You just need these fundamental characteristics about you that you live by to become somebody that has an impact. And that is authentic leadership. When you are able to sway those around you with how you move. And you all move. We all move in our own way. So move in your way. Stick to these principles and you'll find the people are inspired by you. If you like this video, I got another one for you. Why is authenticity important in leadership? Check it out. This will help you really dial that in. And if you like what you're seeing, make some comments below. Engage with me. Tell me what you do to be an authentic leader. I'd love to hear that. Like, subscribe, click on the bell so you don't miss any content. I'm James Burnham. Thanks for hanging out with me. Hey, this next video is coming up. Stick around. Don't get out of your seat. Watch it.